Hi everybody! My name is JJ. I am the maker behind Jessel and Janice where I make stitch markers, project bags, uh, now I'm dyeing yarn and I sell those items in my Etsy shop to help support my local Humane Society which is called Kayakota Humane Society here in small town Iowa. Um, this is my little amateur knitting podcast where I talk about all my crafty adventures, mostly knitting, and yeah, if you've been here before, welcome back. Thank you if you've subscribed. I really appreciate it. If you haven't and you like this video, please consider subscribing. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Jessalyn Janice, where I will post shop updates, other crafty stuff. We do giveaways and flash sales and discount codes. So if that is a platform you use, please consider following me on Instagram. I am also on Facebook as Handmade by Jessalyn Janice, but I am not as active through Facebook in relation to the shop. So Instagram is definitely the place to go if you want to get in contact with me. And of course my Etsy shop, which I will also link below, is called Jessalyn Janice. So yeah, I guess let's just jump into everything. Um, today I am drinking a London Fog that I made out of another hand-thrown mug. I talked about these in my last episode. Um, it's very, it's very yummy. But it's not very warm anymore because <laughs> I'm a mom and nothing ever stays hot long enough for me to actually finish it. I have one, two, three, four finished objects today. One of which is not knitting, but I figured I'd show it anyway, and another of which is a half-finished object that is just done. It's just going to be finished. So let's get into that. So the first finished object, which still needs ends buried and still needs one Kitchener stitch. So to a lot of you that is probably not finished, but it is today for this episode. So these were a gift knit. I talked about these in my last episode. They are socks. I do not own sock blockers, so they do not look super presentable. But they have the, let's see, here's the front, the moon cycles, the side. This was using a chart from the underwing mitts, um, which I will note the designer here. I always forget. I'm terrible. I apologize. But I have finished its mate. So these are going in a little homemade advent box that I am sending to a friend of mine. And I think she's really going to love them. So those are done for the most part. And I am going to hopefully mail those off along with some other items tomorrow. I was going to go to the post office today and my husband accidentally took my key to work with him so I can't um, but I will be mailing off the last giveaway from uh, Instagram in the morning um, any pending orders in the shop will go out tomorrow um, and my sock swap through La Mercier, is that how you say it? They did their winter sock swap and I was paired with this very sweet girl in Ohio. I won't say her name out of respect for her privacy, but we share a lot of the same, uh, like we gravitate toward a lot of the same things when it comes to colorways and yarn. So that was really cool. They did a great job pairing people. My next finished object is a mug. So I'll show it first and then I'll talk about it. 
So this is sort of a squarish mug and let's see right here. I just, I just had fun with it. I, I'll talk about it, but we've got some lavender, some very hard to see stars, some little mushrooms, little toadstool mushrooms. There is a moon. This lighting is not very good. Uh, bigger mushroom. And then the inside is just here. Here. It's just a cute little mug that I am keeping for myself. <laughs> I had a day, I don't know, a week or two ago. Gosh, it's been like three weeks since my last episode because of Thanksgiving. My husband was home, my kids were home, and I did not focus on the podcast. And I think that's totally understandable, but I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving as well. <clears throat> I digress. Um, I had a day a week or two ago where I was just overwhelmed with noise and the chaos that is our household. <laughs> so, um, you know, I grew up in a house, an only child with two parents who worked really hard and weren't always home. And when they were, they had to sleep. So our house was very quiet. And this house is not quiet. We have three boys and a girl and three dogs. Speaking of which. And we're back. Sorry about that. My toddler came into the room with a whole bag of deli sliced ham. So <laughs> that's settled. Anyway, um, our house is very loud, which is great. You know, life is happening, but I find that very overwhelming sometimes. I do have those loop earplugs that I'll put in sometimes that don't block the noise out, but they just tone it down a little bit, and that helps. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just a lot, and I was just getting overwhelmed with everything and said, I need to just go do something quiet, and my husband was home, and I didn't... <laughs> I didn't give him much of a choice in the matter. I just said, hey, you know, you're going to you're going to watch the kids for a couple hours. I'm leaving the house. And that's what I did. And I went to a little ceramic pottery place that we have here in town where you can paint and they'll fire it up in the kiln for you and you can go pick it up. So I did that and I just sat there all by my lonesome with no noise and a completely quiet room and just sort of recharged my energy. So that is the next finished object. And now that I've shown it to you, I can actually use it for something. <laughs> okay, my next finished object is technically a half finished object. Um, I actually knit this a while ago and was just waiting to knit its mate. Um, it is a sock. It's an adorable sock. I will note the pattern here. Um, also has toadstools on it. And I knit this entirely out of Holstgarn Super Soft Held Double. I've talked about it a lot, so I won't go too into detail, but it is a rustic 100% non-superwash wool um and i held it double so it's a dk weight sock and it's a very dense fabric it is very warm it fits very well i would 100 percent wear these but i've decided that i just like looking at it too much to <laughs> wear it so i'm going to find myself a sock blocker put it on the blocker and hang it on the wall in my little book slash crafting room. Um, so here it is. Here is my sock. And again, I will link the name of the pattern. It's got these cute little designs here and the little toadstools. I'll turn it like this. 
Isn't that cute? We just, we just, we just have all the to toadstool stuff today, I guess. But I really like it. I still need to bury the ends. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Um, heel flap and gusset. And yeah, I really like it. And I want to look at it. So it's going to go on the wall. And we're just calling this one done. <clears throat> My next finished object is actually also a new cast on. Since the last podcast, I cast it on. And was just having so much fun I finished it. It is another muscle burr hat. Um, you'll saw the last one I knit and when I knit it I was like I like this but I don't think I'm gonna do it again and then I wore it. So we had a lot of snow come in. It's gone now. Um, it hung around for about a week or so but it was very cold. Um, it's been like 20 degrees with a lot of snow and it was windy and I wore that hat and because of the way that it's constructed you end up with two layers on your head and four over your ears which was magical so I wanted another one and I cast it on but here's the thing <laughs> um, I cast it on with the same stitch as I did my last one and later realized I had a different size needle. My first one I knit on a 2.25 millimeter. This one I did on a 3.25. No, 2.75 millimeter was the first one, if that's not what I said. Um, but this was a 3.25. So the fabric's great. It feels fantastic. I've been rubbing it in my hands and smelling it, and it was a blast to knit. I realized it halfway through the first section and just kept going because I thought it'd be fine and I was having fun. So this is it opened. So this yarn here, I saved the tag so I could show you and I didn't bring it. So I'll put the name and the colorway if it's there on the screen. Um, but it's this gray speckled yarn with browns and purple and gold and little flakes of blue. Very pretty. And then I did a single ply, which is the same. This is the same um, yarn that I used in the color work for those socks. Um, really pretty. So that's there. And then when you fold it inside of itself, do a little bit of origami. Technical difficulties. Oh my gosh. JJ. Okay, you fold it in on itself. And then you've got this hat that you can then fold up with a brim if you want to. Uh, it's it's very big. Like it's it's <laughs> it's pretty big. So got a couple options here. I can just wear it big and not worry about it pushing on my ears. Or I can gift it to somebody who has thicker hair than I do. I have very thin hair and I have a couple people in mind who have that larger textured hair um, that takes up more space under a beanie. I feel like this would suit them. Or my friend came up with the idea of sort of picking up stitches and knitting a rib. Could do that. I can just cut it and knit a rib and make two hats out of it. I don't know. What do you guys think? What should I do with this cute little hat that's way too big? I don't know. Now that I'm seeing it on, it's kind of nice that it doesn't like push my glasses. People. If you have glasses and you wear a beanie, do you find that it irritates the back of your ear? Like, does it push 
this part into your head because I noticed that um, if the hat's snug. But yeah, cast that on and finished it. So that's another one. What else do I have? Is that all of them? I did the socks. I did the half finished, finished object. I did the mug, the hat. I guess it's time for whoops. Let's talk about whips. So I had two socks that I showed in the last episode. And I cannot find where I put the project bag that they are in. So <laughs> can't show you those. Um, I did not do much on the one that just needed the toe. And the other one I knit a few inches, but I put it in time out. And that's probably why I misplaced the bag because I was knitting in a pitch black room. My husband wanted to go to sleep and I wasn't ready, but I didn't want to disturb him and leave the light on. So I was like, it's fine. It's fine. It wasn't fine. I dropped two stitches in two different places on the bottom of the foot. Tried to fix that without being able to see And I, I picked them up, but I made sort of a hot mess of things, and <laughs> I just needed a break from that one. So it's in time out. I'm not upset that I can't find it right now, but I will find it and decide what to do from there. Um, I also have my, my coziest memories blanket. A little spin off. Um, so I have showed this before. I will not talk too much about it, but I'm sort of doing this like patchworky type thing. Last time I showed you, I was right here. I placed a little progress keeper on it. Again with the toadstools. Look at me. This is from Simply Serving, and then I'm using this one from Charmed and Dangerous as my stitch marker, um, but I think it's time to switch these out. Thanksgiving is over, so I'll put something Christmassy on it. Um, but last time I showed you, I was here, so I had this bit knit, so I finished off that square. I did another nine patch, another full square after that, and I am on to another nine patch again. So I guess I knit quite a bit on this one. So that's coming along. I'm really enjoying working on this lately. I think that's all of my whips. Oh, and I am wearing a shirt that says, can I bring my yarn? <laughs> my favorite color. So that's pretty much how I feel about outings in general. Can I bring my yarn? If not, I probably don't want to go. Okay, so we'll do some shop updates and then some acquisitions and some reading. Okay, also, I have plans that I thought I'd discuss. So in last episode, I showed some yarn that I got from a collaboration I did with Kimber's Cozy Creations, and I was sent yarn as partial compensation for bags that I did. So I have four skeins of this beautiful sort of tannish mauvish colorway and I was wanting to do something with color work in parts of the piece and then mostly that color as a cardigan and I found one so I'm not going to show the 
pattern but this is by nomadic knits designed by melissa kemmerer i'll write it on the screen i'm horrible with words um, but it's called copper queen and it is a mostly stockinette cardigan with a little bit of color work uh, on the bottom and on the sleeves and some contrast colored ribbing and it's really pretty um, i'll insert a photo from ravelry of the sample um i'm really excited so i plan to cast that on already got the pattern so there's that all right shop updates i have been busy so i'm gonna be quick so <laughs> isn't that cute they're little doctor doggies or nurse doggies or surgical technician doggies or dentist doggies or phlebotomists, whatever. They've got masks and scrubs and they're adorable. And I did a marine vinyl box bottom drawstring closure handle. It's adorable. So I made two of these. One is going to a podcast. One is going in the shop. Also made two of these. One for a podcast, one for a shop. Little I Love Socks bag. So we've got the red marine vinyl here. I Love Socks fabric and a little holiday season snowflake handle. Cute little sock or hat bag. Next one, this is an oopsie because we, ha we had an issue and I had to patch it. So this will go in the discount bin. It is a fully functional bag. There's nothing wrong with it other than this um, unpleasant little patch. So it'll go in the discount bin, but it is a patchwork bag with a faux leather bottom fully lined drawstring handle and I did some little patches of like three quarter inch square fabric scraps that I had and wanted to utilize in some way so that'll be in the shop this one came out super cute also patchwork oh. so I do English paper piecing which is hand stitching quilts, little scraps of fabric that you hand piece together very slowly with very tiny noodles and sew them together to make quilts. And this is a block that I did with hand stitching. You can see my little tiny stitches in there. Excuse my fingernails. Um, little little bitty stitches where I hand stitched these um and yeah that came out super cute might have to keep one of these I made two of these two different colors it's adorable little sock bag hat bag something how cute is that I did good got another one Right here, this is in a different colorway. Hand pieced contrast box bottom lined drawstring handle. Okay. So cute, cute little hand stitch one. It is quilted. So is this one. Here we go. Quilted. Adorable. Fun. May keep one, don't know. This one is another little patchy patch one with little itty bitty squares of fabric. I mean, here's my finger. You can see 
how tiny those little pieces are. Um, that one will be in the shop. Oh, this one's cute. So I also do foundation paper piecing, which is by machine. It is not hand stitched. Um, and it's where you use a piece of paper and sort of sew the fabric onto it to get these really fun designs and then you rip the paper off. Um, in this case, I made a chicken! <laughs> so we've got our little chicken feet, little chicken head, or little chicken tail. Chicken tail! Chicken's on the back. So this is chicken. chicken. I made a chicken. Chicken! Here we have Another little catchy, as you can see, I was having a lot of fun with these tiny little pieces of fabric. So that one will be in the shop. Got another one of those. I don't know, some of these might go off to podcasters. But how stinking cute, right? I think they're cute. I like scrap. So this one is not for the shop. This one is actually for um, Witch Child in Stitches. Their name is V, and she, they are in California, um, and she, they actually live in an area near where I lived for a while after high school, and. They're just so sweet. Uh, they crocheted me this adorable like head scarf thing that I love and cherish. And I reached out to them and I said, hey, because she had previously mentioned wanting to trade. Oh, excuse me. I am working on this. It's habit. Um, but I'm trying. They had reached out to me saying that they would be willing to trade makes um, if I wanted to make something and then they made something and, and we traded it. And I'm t always up for that. Um, if anyone watching wants to do that, let me know. I love doing that. But um, they crocheted me this adorable little project bag that they're going to send me and I made this for them. And I had asked what they would like or what colors or theme and they told me foresty mushrooms natural colors and i was like yes again with the toadstools i made mushrooms can you see it does it look like toadstools i tried also with foundation paper piecing faux leather they said they wanted a bigger bag um, for like shawls and then the back I used more scraps and I really like yeah. it and I really hope they like it they're little they're little mushrooms do they look like mushrooms do those look like mushrooms those little scrappy scrappy toads little mushrooms it took me like four hours just to piece these together to make the mushrooms and then I had to like make the panels and quilt them and then assemble the bag and all that and so my goal was to do something a little bit more intricate than just a piece of fabric and I really like it I hope they do but yeah witch child and stitches check them out on Instagram and on YouTube um, they're really sweet Okay, the next two, one is for my shop and one is for a friend that I mentioned earlier. This is going in her little makeshift Christmas advent that I'm putting together for her. Um, so I made two bags with Dresden plates. These are very old fabrics right here in the, in the Dresden plate, not in the rest of the bag. Um, well, the lining is, but anyway, um, these, I think some of these are actually feed sack fabrics, like they're really old. So these are hand pieced, the Dresden plates, sorry, 
they are temporarily glued onto the background at which point I applique them onto that fabric, put that fabric on fusible fleece, quilted it, cut it in half, and made them into bags. And then one more, I'm gonna do this quickly because I need to charge my phone. This one is a little bit crazy. This was just traditionally pieced, no foundation or English paper piecing. Just traditional, cut up pieces, sew them together. I made a coffee cup. It's like a little boho fun coffee, right? Teacup, coffee cup, whatever. I think it's adorable. And the back is really crazy because I had a bunch of that fabric. So that one's gonna be in the shop. If that's your style. We're gonna pause and come back for the rest because I need to charge my charge my phone. Okay, so acquisitions. Um, I have a couple. So a while ago, like a while ago, I had ordered from Desert Vista Dye Works. And they are dye to order. So if you order something, it doesn't go out for a while. And she had a lot of orders at the time. And she'll post like a schedule of when certain order numbers are going to be dyed and then send out the following week. And in addition to that time, there was a mix up and the batch of invoices that mine was in um, sort of got mixed up and done later, which is it's fine. I don't care. I felt so bad. She was so stressed out about it. It's fine, but it, it, it's been a while. So I had ordered two. Um, this one is Abstract Cacti. These are both 7525, but this one is DK. So this will be a pair of DK socks. And then this one is Oktoberfest, which is on fingering. And look how gorgeous that is. Obviously, I intended to knit these for fall. Uh, it's a little late now, but that's okay because I wear fall colors year-round. So I think this one is really pretty. So that's those. And then I watch uh, Knit Together with Ken and, and Jana on YouTube. If you all watch them... You may have seen them show some bags that I made them. If you don't watch them, go watch them. They're fun. They are in, where are they? Somewhere in New York. I want to say like Connecticut. Well, let's see if it says on here. No, it doesn't. Um, I'll, I'll put it in. Um, but they film their regular podcasts out of their local yarn shop. They just hang out in there and film, and that yarn shop is called Pick Up Every Stitch. And I follow Pick Up Every Stitch on Instagram as a result of their podcast, and they had posted, the, the shop had posted some beautiful gobstopper balls of self-striping, and one of those really caught my eye. And... Um, Kristen and Maddie from We Share Needles podcast are hosting a knit along that started the 26th, I think, of this month of November um, that's local yarn shop themed. So whether it's your local yarn shop or another local yarn shop, as long as it's a brick and mortar yarn store, um, you knit with something from... The yarn store and you can enter it into the cow. So I got this ball and it's not quite as, there we go. It's got some sort of like sagey green. I feel like it looks a little more limey on camera than it is, but it's this pretty sage green with this grayish cream and then this golden color that looks a little more orange on camera than it actually is. But I just thought that was pretty. 
This is the dyer, Scrumptious Pearl. And the lady on the phone at Pick Up Every Stitch was super sweet and talkative and um, was telling me about the dyer. She is a mom, I think, of another dyer. It's a mom and a daughter, but they each have their own yarn dyeing business. And they're in Canada. This is the colorway sea glass, and it is an 80-20 blend. So this will be my cast on for that knit along, I think. And then I have been wanting to knit an Oslo hat for a while in a fingering and Surrey combo. Um, the last episode I showed the Casita colorway by Camber's Cozy Creations that she sent me as partial compensation fell in love with it, cast it onto the sock, frogged it, said it was too good, so I'm going to make myself mittens from it, and I decided, why not do an Oslo? So she sent me the colorway treasure as my base, my fingering, that I am going to hold with Casita on Surrey, baby Surrey alpaca silk. How pretty is that going to be? And then I have the DK weight in the Casita colorway that I will use for some matching mittens. And I cannot wait to cast this on. And now that I have my 3.25, not 2.75, 3.25 16 inch circulars free, I can do that. So I've already got the pattern. I just need to wind these babies up and cat, oh my gosh, that is so soft so soft i love it oh so kimber's cozy creations again the colorway casita and treasure and that is all my acquisitions um i did have some more happy mail come but it is part of a collaboration that i have not advertised fully yet so i'm going to wait it is a three-way collaboration myself and two other makers. I'm going to wait for the other maker to send her stuff, me to finish up mine, and I will show them all together. But it is between myself, who is making bags, Colored Me Sheepish, who is dyeing gorgeous yarn sets. And like, they're, they're, oh, she is so good. She's so good. Um, wait till y'all see it. And Simply Serving is doing stitch markers to go with it. They will be sold as sets in my shop. If I sell out, we will likely do some pre-orders. And these sets will be a new thing that I'm going to start doing. All of my sales benefit Kayakota Humane Society, but I'm going to start doing a series of collaborations where it specifically highlights one animal, like per set from the shelter that is up for adoption where we will tell you about that animal we will tell you the recommendations toward you know what type of family or household would be good for that animal um we'll post some pictures that i take of that animal and we will be putting together a little collaboration of bag yarn and stitch marker in the theme of said animal to help again bring awareness to them hopefully get somebody's attention that you know says oh that's the perfect dog or cat for our home get them adopted and at the same time it benefits the shelter with this particular collaboration the animal is penny i will insert here penny is a super super friendly pit bull um, who unfortunately has been at Kayakota for about three years now, which just blows my mind because she is the sweetest, most beautiful pity ever. And um, she's basically the shelter mascot at this point. She is super happy there. Like she loves it. She's happy, but she deserves a good family and a good home. And so we're, we're highlighting her with this collaboration, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. 
to show these because they both did so good. And they both were super generous. And for my side of things, because I'm selling them in my shop and therefore I'm outright buying the supplies from these makers and then reselling the kits. They really discounted um, what they would usually charge for something like this to help benefit the shelter even more. So I always donate my portion um, pre-expenses. I just take from the customer's uh, price that they pay for it between 10 and 20 percent, um, whatever I can afford to do, the most I can afford to do that month, and then that goes directly to the shelter. I make a little trip down there once a month. We make an afternoon of it. We bring them a check, some donations. The kids play with them. It's, it's an event. But in this case, it will be more than that because it will be my percentage that I'm able to take out, but then also the additional money because it's less that I had to pay for it if that makes sense. Like they sold the items to me at an even bigger discount so that that extra difference could also go to the shelter, um, which I, I'm i so thankful for. I'm so thankful that they were both able to hop on board so enthusiastically. They were both so excited for it. And it was just this perfect storm of events to make this awesome collab. And I'm so excited to show it and just so grateful that they were so on board with the whole idea of it. So that will be coming soon. What have I been reading? Um, so I talked previously about Fairy Tale. Uh, it was an amazing book by Stephen King. And I'm not finding anything that's living up to it. I have listened to, I think, three books since then. And honestly, what was it? Oh my gosh, what were they? Forest of Memories. I don't know if I mentioned that one in the last episode. Maybe I did. Another one that was like this hotel situation that was like this weird prictory hell thing. I, it was weird. Okay, thank you. Put it in there. Um, I don't know. I'm starting one now. I'll put the title in. It's like an Alaska true story about settlers in Alaska, and I'm enjoying it so far. Hang on, sorry, update from the crazy sock lady. Um, I'm enjoying it so far, but like I said, nothing is living up to that book right now, so everything else is a little disappointing. Um, Nothing special to say just yet. I'll find one, I'm sure. But, yeah. Is that all? I think that's all today. So, again, I hope you all had a really great holiday weekend. Sorry for the late podcast post. But, again, I was spending time with family, and that's what's important. Um, if you are interested in shopping... Uh, in my Etsy shop this holiday season. I would super duper appreciate it. I will link that below. If you liked anything about this podcast, please hit like, subscribe, and the little bell for notifications. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me how your Thanksgiving was. Tell me what you're working on. Tell me what you like to see on here. I would like to do a giveaway soon. We are, I think, at like 60-something subscribers at the time of me filming this, which, again, very small channel, but we're getting there. So I figure when we get to our 100 subscriber milestone, we'll do a giveaway on YouTube. Do you guys want a bag? Do you want yarn? What do you want? Let me know. Um, um you got your barn? Yeah. You gonna put your moo cow in it? No, you ain't no moo cow. There's no moo cow? Where'd the moo cow go? Sissy took it out to school. Sissy took it to school? Yeah. Well, go get your four wheeler. Or your trucks. You can put your tractors in it. No, 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 no four wheeler. She took it out to school. She took your four wheeler too? Are you sure? No, no, no. I'm so weird at home. 
Okay. Well, Where's the go? go get your little your little green tractors. You can put those in your barn. Yeah. They're in the playroom. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for sticking around in this little uh, hot mess express that I call my life. Uh, <laughs> and I hope to see you next time. Oh my goodness. What is on your face? What is that? What's on your face? Did you find chocolate? Yeah. Where? These kids, man. I'm trying so hard to just like get a second to like do this, but I have to keep have to keep disappearing. So, so this one's a little bit bigger. Would you like to show your face? Mm hmm Yeah. No, that's not slime. Give it to mom. That's not slime, baby.